Tonight on Reporting Scotland, I'm on Dundee's waterfront where we're getting a first look at the new v and Museum. The museum has been years in the making and contains Scottish design from Charles Rennie Mackintosh to the great ocean liners. We'll find out what some young Dundonians think of it. It's kind of like mind-blowing. I thought it looked a bit weird, but then when you come inside it, it looks outstanding. It just kind of looks like an optical illusion. I mean, you don't know where to look when you look at it. This striking building is the centrepiece of the transformation of the waterfront. But what will the V&A do for the regeneration of Dundee? I love the arch of the museum. And I'll get a guided tour from the museum's director, Philip Long. Also coming up on tonight's programme, as two men are convicted, dramatic pictures are released of an armed gang carrying out a jewellery raid on one of Scotland's most exclusive hotels. After the death of a pensioner is linked to a mesh implant, the health secretary announces an effective ban on their use. It's going to be Laura Muir winning the gold medal in a fast time. And after a great year for Scottish athletics, we speak to the man who's hoping to take the sport to even greater heights. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of Reporting Scotland, live from Dundee. The city of Discovery is now home to Scotland's first design museum, the v and Dundee. Celebrating both international and Scottish design, it's a spectacular symbol of the city's growing confidence as it redefines itself in the modern world. We've seen the outside taking shape for years, but today we got the first glimpse inside at some of the exhibitions and installations that await the estimated half a million visitors expected in the first year. Our arts correspondent, Pauline McLean, reveals all. For months now, the v &A has been rising quietly from the banks of the Tay. A first glimpse inside today, anything but quiet, for the 250 media representatives from around the world. The first museum dedicated to design itself the main attraction. And what else to stage in a ship-shaped museum but an exhibition dedicated to classic designs on ocean liners. There's also a permanent collection of more than 200 Scottish design classics and many more in the v as extensive collection to choose from. The v a collection is one of the world's most extraordinary collections of design history, both historic and contemporary. And when they did the classification of objects which were classified as Scottish design objects, there are 12,000 of them. So it's an incredibly rich theme to mine, and one which we're doing in partnership with colleagues in London and with all of that expertise there. But also we're working with museums and, and lenders right across Scotland. Another key attraction, this Macintosh tea room, in storage since 1971, an intricate jigsaw of 1,200 pieces, rebuilt, restored, and now back on display. There's a simplicity to Macintosh's design here, and a rhythm. And I think in King Okuma's building, amazing building, there's a simplicity and a rhythm. Both architects respond to the Scottish landscape and to the Scottish tradition in architecture and to nature. And I think it's wonderful to have this Macintosh interior having a dialogue with the amazing building that is the DNA Dundee. That's the discovery. That's the public will have to wait another few days, unless, like this Dundee Primary School group, you've been invited in early to give your opinions on the country's newest museum. I think it's just amazing. Like It's kind of like mind-blowing. This museum is kind of more interactive and shows the fun experience that is in museums. It just kind of looks like an optical illusion. I mean, you don't know where to look when you look at it, but you, you look hard enough, you can see the door. Ten years in the making, two more days until it's officially launched. But the V&A Dundee has arrived. Polly McLean. Reporting Scotland. This building's the heart of a £1 billion redevelopment of Dundee's waterfront, connecting the city centre up there to the River Tay. Old buildings have been swept away, there's a new road layout and new civic spaces. And there's talk of the regeneration creating 9,000 new jobs. 
Andrew Anderson reports now on Dundee's changing face and fortune. Fun D, a new water sports centre on Dundee's waterfront. Another sign of how the VNA is making waves, attracting new ventures. The changing landscape of the location is, is amazing. Obviously going to draw more tourists in. We want to be able to offer things to the local public, but obviously it's kind of 50-50. We want to be able to bring tourists in. And like I said earlier, it's a no-brainer. The VNA sits at the heart of the redevelopment of Dundee's waterfront. The 30-year project's just past the halfway mark. A billion pounds of private and public money being invested. All around the VNA, you can see how some of that money is already being spent. Directly across the road, a new railway station with a hotel above it. And over here, one of the new office blocks, which it's hoped will attract new businesses and with them, new jobs. I joined the man who masterminded the waterfront project for a boat trip along the river. He wants to stress the VNA is important, but not the whole story. The port of Dundee is an absolutely crucial part of the waterfront. It's not all about the central area and the V&A. This is just as important, if not more important, to the city's economy because it's going to bring engineering jobs to Dundee and, and the wider area and, and balance our economy. Like so many places up and down the country... Dundee Dundee's been here before. This was the redevelopment of the 1960s, but it didn't stop traditional industries disappearing, along with jobs. Communities like Lochee fared badly. It was once home to the jute mill workers. It's about two miles from the waterfront, but some folk here feel forgotten. We are one of the most deprived areas in Scotland, unfortunately. We've got the highest number of drug deaths um, in Europe. So to think that a building development in the centre is going to help that is, is unlikely. I mean, we, we just can't see it happening up here. But this Dundee-born entrepreneur takes a different view. We've really started the next generation of our growth as a city, both culturally, from a business perspective. You know, we're seeing a rising population locally. Uh, people want to be in Dundee, want to be part of what's happening, and that's only going to continue from here. Life sciences and computer gaming have already earned Dundee an international reputation. The waterfront scene is the next big step for a city which feels its time may finally have arrived. Andrew Anderson, reporting Scotland, Dundee. The great thing about this building is that its impressive inside is out. Earlier I caught up with the museum's director, Philip Long, who's been working towards this day for seven years. Wow, this is absolutely fantastic. Philip, I'm bowled over. The, the wood, the space, the, the water coming in. Is this how you envisaged it all? Well, Sally, as you know, I've been working on this project for many years, but I don't think anything quite prepared us for uh, Kingo's Kuma's completed uh, building. We're very proud of it. It is this wonderful job of bridging the River Tay and the city, re-establishing that, that famous connection. But inside now, we can reveal what we've been keeping <laughs> under wraps for so many years. And, and it's wonder and wonderful to see people in it as well. I mean, it's not the public yet, but, but there's, a, there's an energy about the place now, isn't there? It's a great thrill to have people in it, finally. After all, it's a museum uh, about design, about things that surround people's lives every day. It only comes alive, it only starts working uh, once we have people in it. So today, to see people in it, mm. using it, enjoying it, is a great thrill for us all. After a very long slog. Years, <laughs> Philip. What does it feel like today? Well, do you know, today I'm very <laughs> excited. It, it is fantastic to, to have people here and finally to be able to share it and uh, look forward to uh, uh, the opening of a museum that we want to make a difference to people's lives in the future. I love the arch of the museum and, and it's because there was a royal arch here, a Victorian Albert arch here in the mid 19th century to commemorate the landing of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. That arch was lost in the 1960s and now we've created a new arch where people will come, they will meet, they may say farewells by. We have Dundee all around us here, we have the smell of the sea wafting across us here. What does this place mean? to Dundee and indeed to Scotland. I think V&A Dundee means a new symbol of confidence. Dundee is going through this amazing journey. Let's not forget that V&A Dundee has been developed in, in years, of course, of 
economic uncertainty. And in the latter part of the last century, Dundee's had many years of difficulty. This is a city with an energy and a spirit. And V&A Dundee is, 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 is an expression of that and an expression of it around the world. Philip, I just have to ask you this. Pigeons, lovely pristine building, pigeon poo. We've looked very hard at this remarkable site that it has by the river and how we protect it uh, from birds. And the way that it's been designed, the angle of the, of the slats outside, other measures that we've, that we've taken uh, should protect us from that. So, Have you got any secret, secret little weapons in there? Uh, we might do, but perhaps I won't show this. Okay. <laughs> Philip, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> More from Tundee later, but let's go to Jackie now with the rest of tonight's news. Thank you, Sally. Two men have been convicted of carrying... Thanks very much, Christopher. Let's get a last word here in a very breezy Dundee from our arts correspondent, Polly McLean. What do you make of it then, Polly? Well, Sally, the, the thing about having a world-class building that we've seen develop here in Dundee over the last few years is the expectation is so high for what's inside. So to have that moment of going inside today was amazing. I'm glad to say it lived up to every expectation. It, did, it really did, it? had didn't the it? wow factor on so many levels, on the level of the building itself, which is its greatest exhibit, I suppose, and the fact that the interior reflects the exterior. You've got those wooden cliffs inside instead of the, the cliffs that we see outside. Side. The fact you've got the Oak Room, which is an attraction in its own right. If you're interested in Macintosh, you will want to see that after all this time. And then those design galleries that are just full of all these items. And they were saying today there's 200 permanent exhibits there, but there's a, they, they have worked out that there are 12,000 exhibits in the V&A's collection, many of them unseen at the moment, which have Scottish connections. So you can imagine all the exhibi exhibitions which are still to come. Now, there's a very posh gala dinner going on inside this Quite evening. Outside. <laughs> which is why we're outside. But what about the rest of the, the public? When when do does everybody else get well, in? Well, I have to say, if you have a ticket, you can come along at the weekend because there are a number of events that will give people a chance to see inside and outside over the weekend. There's a live concert outside on Friday night. But in terms of if you haven't got a ticket and you just want to come as a member of the public, you have to wait till next Monday. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Polly McLean. And that's it from Reporting Scotland and from v &A Dundee, this magnificent celebration of design excellence on the banks of the Tay. From all of us, Good night.